So far, we have talked about stack buffer overflows. Remember, we started with the idea of buffer overflows, and then I quickly sort of narrowed onto stack buffer overflows or overflows on the stack. There are other variations of buffer overflows, and uh, there are a number of reasons for those. So we want to talk about these different types or, or variations of buffer overflows before we actually start talking about some defenses against these kind of attacks that exploit buffer overflow. So the first variation we're going to talk about is what is called return to libc. Libc is the library, C library. All our programs use library functions. So remember when I was talking about buffer overflow, shell code, modifying return address, our assumption was that we're going to return address is going to be modified to point to some place where we are able to place the shell code. And that could be on the stack itself. In that case, you would transfer control to the shell code and execute it off the stack because that's where the code is stored, the shell code is stored. We're going to talk about some defenses where systems don't allow you to do that. So it's not easy to find room for your shell code on the stack and get it executed. So the variations of where you should return, you don't have to return to code that you explicitly write as shell code, but you can return to a function in the library. So the return address is going to be modified. The return address that we had on the stack is going to be modified to point to a standard library function. So the assumption here is that you'll be able to figure out the address of the library function. And once you have that, that's what is going to overwrite. So when you do the stack buffer overflow, you make sure that library function address is what gets returned into the return address field on the stack frame. So why do we want to do that? Why do you want to return to a library function? Well, if you return to the right kind of library function and you're able to set up the arguments for it or the parameters before the call happens on the stack, then you can execute a library function with arguments or parameters of your choice. So think about the library function call system. The system call, if you look at it carefully, you can ask it to execute bin CSH or some CSH or something like that. And as a result of executing this function call, you would launch a command shell. That's what our shell code was doing before. Now we can get the same result by executing a library function. And the reason it would do that for us is that before we make the call to it, we go to it by returning from this function where we were able to overflow the buffer. We're going to set the stack in such a way that the arguments actually are going to be such so for example, I said the system call should execute bin something. It's going to be such that when you hit the system library function, or the library function system, it's actually going to do what it, you want it to do, in particular give you a shell command, a command shell. So when that happens, you actually then going to go execute code that you didn't have to craft and place on the stack. You just executing a library function and you manipulating its input by properly crafting that input on the stack before you make this library function call, and then it's going to do your bidding if you are that hacker. So in libc, uh, the thing to remember is that the return address is modified to point to a chosen library function, and we set up its input in such a way that the execution of library function with that input allows the attacker to sort of gain control the same way we were able to do before with shellcode. 